So today I have Alan Jeanette Murray from Running Raw Around Australia. Alan Jeanette did a marathon every day for 2013, totaling to 366 marathons, breaking a world record for the most consecutive marathons. First off, I'd just like to start off by saying congratulations for all you guys have done. Well, thank you. Yeah, it was great. Um, what motivated you all to, to do such a such an event? Um, what ma motivated you guys to to run as many marathons as this? Uh, well, um, I think th there were many things that motivated us. Um, the reason why we wanted to do that, but mainly was to bring a really good positive message to as many people as we could for as long as we could. And um, in running a marathon a day throughout the whole year um, that was bringing you know the attention that we needed through the media to get you know let people know what we were doing and and why so um, that was the reason for running a marathon every day but we can run a marathon every day because of what we eat and what we don't eat and uh, the conscious lifestyle choices that we make so that was you know something that we wanted people to um, to get that message and to be inspired by what we're doing, uh, and um, that seems to have worked quite well. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, you guys have definitely shown what what the capabilities of this diet can do. Plus, with a little bit of sport as well, you you can go so so far with this. So, um, you know, just kind of getting into you know maybe some of the the struggles you guys have faced, maybe mentally, physically while doing the marathons around Australia and how did you keep going you know so many people unfortunately can't even run around the block you know due to physical even mental um you know uh boundaries so how did you guys overcome that doing running around uh the whole country of Australia yeah well <clears throat> Melvin said it was going to be easy <laughs> but uh i mean it wasn't really that that difficult um the most, the things that were more, more likely to actually um, stop us in our tracks was was the weather. Mm. And we did have a couple of days there where it was forty four degrees. Oh wow! And it's pretty hot. hot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but on those days, we just sort of took it a bit more easy. We slowed our slowed our pace down a little bit, and uh, drank way more water, and just took a few more breaks so we could have time to drink and rest a bit. Yeah, we only had two or three days like that, but we had a lot of other days where the temperature was thirty six to thirty eight, okay. which is still pretty. Cool. Yeah, um, we had some bushfires up there, up around oh. the Canberra area, early in the year, <laughs> and really just by more by good luck than anything else that we managed to keep on going. Uh, we had one area there where we just came around the corner, and you could see where the bushfire had been the, the day before. Everything was black and smoldering. Now, if we'd been there on that day, they probably would have turned us back. Yeah. We still, would have, still probably would have found somewhere to run a marathon, but we probably would have had to do a loop or something. Yeah. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and I think, um, you know, like mentally being able to focus on the reason why we were doing it was a, a big thing. Um, and also because we were doing it to raise awareness for some charities. And so whenever we felt like, you know, it was getting a bit tough, then we thought about them and how tough it is for them all the time. Um, and so, you know, you just, it, it sort of brings it back into perspective. I mean, we, we were well trained and well fueled. And so really, as Alan said, the, the, the weather really was the only challenge, um, physically, uh, it wasn't really an issue for us because we would train for it. Um, although it's really hard to train for <laughs> for a marathon a day for a year. Oh, I bet. But we as we could, um, the year before we we ran um, ran about six thousand kilometres in training, wow. uh, which was halfway around. You know that would have taken us halfway around the country as it was, and we hadn't started yet. So we we sort of did what we could beforehand. Um, and by the time we were probably a quarter of the way, third of the way around, we were we were trained. Uh, we, yeah. we had no no worries about being able to do it physically at that point. Um, 
but mentally and, and emotionally too, there were some challenges, um, and that depended on um, on the day really. So in some places we were like, if you if you look at the map of Australia, and you go across the bottom of Australia, which is called the Nullarbor, which means no trees. Oh. Um, there are no trees, and the and the road is straight for as far as you can see. I think there's one piece there that's the longest straight piece of road in the whole continent. And, oh, wow. <laughs> uh, and was, yeah, so we went for days, and it was like, it was kind of like Groundhog Day, like every morning. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> out there, you can see in front of you for as far as, you know, the horizon and, and behind, and and you just keep going. And that was, that was sort of um, more a mind game. For us to be able to, um, you know, just keep that rolling and and finding something like when we were running the rest of the country, there was always something different that you saw, and you know the landscape would change and and different things like that. But in that area, it really was, um, you know, some you really had to focus and dig quite deep sometimes to be able to just keep keep that going. But on the other hand, it was getting close to the finish for us. So we were well into, you know, three quarters of the way around at that point. So that also was was a good, you know, knowing that we were getting every day we were getting closer to uh, to home. So, um, you know, so that we just sort of made the, the best of, of the situation. And, and running together was a big thing because, um, you know, I can't imagine doing it on your own. Um in places like that, yeah. where it would be, you know, quite hard to, you know, just just keep keep going, so to speak. So, yeah, we usually found something to talk about or plan for the next day or working out schedules and things like that. So, um, just got us through each day. Yeah. But yeah. Just to talk about another wee bit, the actual Nullarbor Plain, which Jeanette said means no trees, twenty seven days. So the 27 days, all, all we saw in those 27 days was about six petrol stations, wow. gas stations. That's and crazy. they don't sell food, actually. <laughs> they sell stuff that some people call food, but really it's uh, <laughs> chocolate biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh. and sort of dried up meat pies. So we had to stock up for actually 27 days. Mm -hmm. And we did a pretty good job. We filled up the ute with... Uh, with oranges and bananas and apples and all sorts of fruit. But we did run short. We actually only had enough food we found out for 24 days. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we had four days we were on sort of rations. But we did have a huge bag of chia seeds and a huge bag of raisins. So okay. that, became our, that became our staple diet. We had that sort of twice a day with a few bits and pieces that we were sort of cleaning up, yeah. the old orange and apple. Mm -hmm. But we found uh, chia seeds with mixed with raisins went quite well. It seemed to fuel us. It's a good bit of protein and carbs, and uh, you know we could run after a big mm -hmm. after a big bowl of that. We could still go out and run another ten k. Yeah, so, plus I think we were quite well fueled to start with. Like running across there, you know, the twenty four days before we went on to shear, <laughs> um, you know, we'd been eating really, really good. Um, organic fruit and veg, so we were, you know, still work, still using those stores. So it was good. Yeah, and how? Um, just talking about the food that you guys all did. You all did it on a raw vegan diet. You know, um, how much food did you guys have to eat in a day? You know, I'd imagine you guys running the marathon every day would be a lot of calories. You know. Yeah, that's true. Um, Bananas seem to be a really good staple part of the diet. They keep fairly well. I mean, the bananas, they were sort of a bit too green for the first few days. But for the last few days, they were getting really just sort of soft and mushy, but we're still quite edible. So there were days when we ate as many as 30 bananas each. Uh, oh, that was the most we ever ate. But quite often, uh, on a regular basis, we would eat between 15 and 20 bananas each per day. As well as all the other fruits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we'd, we'd make smoothies with lots of bananas on them. Greens seemed to keep quite well, so we had big bunches of kale and spinach, silver beet, 
they kept really well. We had a few small fridges mm -hmm. so we could make green smoothies, and that seemed to fuel yeah. us quite like well. This. See the green smoothie? Yeah, there we are. Just like that. That's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a lot. We, oh. We're coming for a break after doing, say, 10 kilometers, and we'd have three or four of these green smoothies. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. Yeah, a lot of people in the running world, you know, you hear them talking about using supplements, you know, things like caffeine and all that. Did, did you guys have to do any of that? Wow. No. That's incredible. We, we, had, we had no supplements, no um, superfoods. Uh, fruit and vegetables fresh were our superfoods. And um, we never have those anyway. And we also do not have any kind of um, like painkillers or any kind of drugs or anything like that. Um, no stimulants like coffee or tea or anything either. So we got everything we needed in, in the way of, you know, fueling and um, being not only satiated with food but also being fueled and having the amount of um, energy we needed for recovery as well, uh, just straight from fruit and vegetables. And that was the biggest um message really that we wanted to bring to people is that you don't have to get it's not complicated it's very simple um you just eat fruit and vegetables until you're satiated and um and it's enough and obviously if you're going to run a marathon every day which we don't necessarily recommend <laughs> um but if you're going to do something as extreme as that then um then you need to eat more it's that simple really yeah, absolutely. You certainly don't need all these extras. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, another another thing um, uh, people would say is eating a lot of protein, dairy, you know, salts uh, to to be to be strong as an athlete. You know, what are you guys' thoughts on this advice that is being pushed to people? You know, uh, well, I think yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's actually well, it's obviously clearly a myth because we don't have any of that and. Um, you know, and we've just done something physically, mentally, and emotionally bigger than anybody else has ever done in that way. Um, at our age as well, which is we're both in our sixties, and so clearly um, that is that is a myth that you need to have animal products or um, any kind of um, supplements to get enough protein or any any nutrients. Um, if you're eating enough. Uh, fruits and vegetables, especially, you know, greens with the vegetables, um, you will get enough protein and B12 and all all the nutrients that people are concerned about. Um, but you have to eat enough and you have to eat it correctly. So, um, you know, just being, calling yourself raw vegan and just eating pasta or, or rice every day doesn't work. And, um, you know, those are empty calories anyway, and they're acidic to the body. So you really have to have as much alkaline food, live food as you can possibly get to get the nutrients you need to do something like what we did. But for just normal living, you know, we, we have a smoothie every day um, and we have a lot of fruit throughout the day and, you know, a nice big green salad um, at the end of the day, perhaps, and a big, um, and a big juice. So that's just, you know, normally, and we, we just graze whenever we want to. Um, so we're not having to sort of prepare huge, big meals and looking for, you know, where do we get our protein? We ran all the way around Australia, almost 16,000 kilometers, looking for this protein that people keep worrying about. And, <laughs> um, you know, it was, it's never an issue. We never worry about where we're getting what because because we eat only raw fruits and veg all the food that we get that we eat is completely 100 percent nutrient laden food and it's a you know it's accessible to your body your body assimilates it immediately um for us it was basically going straight into the bloodstream within about half an hour and we could and it's usable so we weren't having to spend three or four days digesting and processing um, food and using up, you know, our stored energy in in processing non-food or, or dead food. So um, it's very, it, you know, it 
we, need to, we just never have to worry or think about it. We don't have to even count calories. We generally know how much food we need to eat for to get, you know, three to 4,000 calories, which is what we needed to run a marathon a day. But in our normal lifestyle, perhaps we, you know, we might be 1,800, 2,000 calories because we do go for a run every day. Um, and basically we just make sure that we have a good, good smoothie and plenty of fruit during the day. And whenever we feel like we want to eat, then we do. Um, you know, we don't sort of think, okay, I have to go and eat this. You know, I have to have my meat and veg and all that type of thing um, to get my protein and so on. We, right. we just don't even think about it. It's not not necessary when you're eating 100% nutrient-laden food to start with because your body tells you, okay, that's enough for that. You might want to have an apple now, you know. So, so that's, yeah. the, that's the thing that we found. Some days we'll be running along and one day might seem a bit harder than the day before. We might feel a bit more tired or we couldn't keep our speed up quite as much. And then we'd look back on the, on the day before and say, what did we eat the day before? Because hmm. I think your body gets really sort of tuned in. You can really listen yeah. to your body mm -hmm. and your body's going to tell you. So, oh, well, maybe, you know, we had that extra avocados yesterday because they were going right. Maybe we shouldn't have done that, you know, and we'd just sort of talk about this. And, mm. and But we could really tell. I mean, some days we felt like, I mean, some days 42K or 26 miles just felt like 10 miles. Hmm. And some days 26 miles felt like 50, 50 miles, you know, yeah. especially the last few at the end. Mm -hmm. But we can look back on the days before, the weeks before, and pretty much figure out why some days were actually harder than others. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. So, um, you know, a lot of people would say, uh, you know, the raw vegan diet, sure, it's healthy, it's great for athletes. How about the normal, uh, just standard person living a uh, normal life? Would you recommend a raw vegan diet to them? Absolutely, no question. Um, I mean, why, why would you not have a raw vegan lifestyle if that's what's going to keep you in a state of optimum health? Yeah. You know, when you're in that state of optimum health, the options are endless. You can do anything you want. Um, you know, you can run a marathon a day if you wanted to. You can you can do anything. You don't even have. And again, you don't have to think about whether or not you you're capable, not just physically but mentally as well, to do some. You know, to achieve some goal that you might want to set for yourself, or that's something you've always wanted to do, or um, whatever. Because you know, you can you can do it. You just set yourself to it, and you can you can do it if you're in a state of optimum health. When your health is compromised, then that's a whole different story. So um, for everybody, whether, you know, old, young, um, it, it doesn't matter um, who you are or what sta stage you're at in your life, um, a raw vegan diet is going to be the healthiest choice you can make and the most conscious choice you can make. And even if people just eliminated um, you know, the, the negative food or the, 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 uh, the food that is or the non-food that is obviously compromising the body, such as junk food, um, pro every, all processed food, and clearly dead animals, um, animal products of all sorts, then, um, then, and then increase the amount of fruit and vegetables, so live food that's alkaline and really high in nutrients, um, you can't you can't go wrong, seriously. So you just, if you do that, um, it's going to be better for yourself and for, for, you know, for everybody really, for your own health and the health of the planet and the health and well-being, obviously, of the animals. So, um, yeah, totally would recommend it for everybody and anybody that has a health issue as well. Um, it can completely reverse and rejuvenate. It just takes time. You have to be patient and you have to, you know, really be committed to your own well-being. That's the first thing is to make sure that, you know, you're committed to being, to taking care of yourself. We're, we're all capable of it and our bodies, that's what our bodies do, you know. And um, so, yeah, everybody Everybody, if if everybody was uh, was raw vegan and doing it right, um, that would that would be the optimum um, situation for our species and for the planet and for all other species. Yeah, because I think one thing that brings it home on the on the day we left, 
the first day we were about halfway through the run and we were interviewed by somebody, some, some TV channel. And the guy said quite seriously, well, what's going to happen if you wake up one morning and you're too sick to run? And I was just sort of, I mean, to me, that didn't make any sense at all. So I said to him, look, that's not going to happen. We're always going to be ready to run. And I think he gave me a look like he'd be, I was being a bit smart or a bit sort of, yeah. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I knew that that wouldn't, be the, that wouldn't be the reason that we wouldn't be able to run. We did have a couple of days, um, both of us had a couple of falls, tripped over things in the dark, and uh, mm. Jeanette a couple of times fell really, really heavily. And I did think then that might, sort of, that might be the end of the run because I didn't think she'd be able to carry on. But uh, she sort of got off and said, just leave, me, just leave me to sit here on the side of the road for a few minutes while I get my breath back and see what's wrong, and I think I'll be okay. And she walked for a while, and then she ran slowly. And then uh, moved into a bit of a slow, slow run. But by the end of the day, she was just back on track. So we actually healed, even though we, we've been injured through falling down and making contact pretty heavily with the ground. We actually healed as we went along. Wow. And the next morning, she woke up and her ribs were really sore. She had lots of skin and stuff off her elbows and knees. But during the course of the next month, everything healed up, even though even despite what we were doing. You know. We had a lot of people saying, oh, you know, just take a rest, you know, take a couple of days off, you know, so that you can heal. Um, but I knew that it was going, you know, I was going to heal while I was running anyway. I just needed to take it a little more easy to give the body the chance to do that. And um, so in a lot of ways, even that is even more perhaps amazing to a lot of people, yeah. the fact that you can not just run a marathon a day on fruit and veg, but you can heal at the same time. Yeah, I actually had crack ribs and um, oh, my arm, I've only really just got my arm back into um, being able to lift weights and things. So, yeah. Wow, it's amazing, yeah, how, how fast you can heal with just fruits and vegetables, right? Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, let's go into uh, how where you all came from before you guys uh, did this marathon, you know, in terms of health and nutrition, were you guys – Always raw vegan, or uh, well, we have to say that we've been completely 100% raw vegan for about the last 11, yeah. 11 years now, well, almost 12 years. Yeah. So, it's, it's, this is not just a new thing, we sort of figured it out. We've been to lots of uh, festivals and places and conferences and um, talked to gurus and people who have done this before, people like Doug, uh, Dr. Douglas Graham and other people, and uh, so we, we have figured it out, so it's not just a new thing. But before that, I mean, 12 years ago, we actually ran the length of New Zealand, oh, wow. which we thought was a big deal at the time. It was 50 marathons in, in 50 days. Mm -hmm. and by the time we got to the end, we sort of had enough, <laughs> but I was sore the whole time. Then I was learning how to be a vegan. This is 12 years ago. And I uh, wasn't doing a very good job of it. I really thought that fish and chips was you know, good, good vegan food, but of course <laughs> it wasn't. But then, I mean, 12 years ago, and we were 12 years younger, I was hurting the whole time. My muscles were always sore. And uh, this trip, we never really had sore muscles at all. I mean, at, at the end of each day, we'd feel a bit weary, and our feet, because we were wearing a, a lightweight shoe, and because some of the terrain up there is quite rough underfoot, big sort of chunky tar seal, at the end of the day, each day, our feet would be sort of sore and a bit numb. But by the morning, we'd wake up and everything was back, back to normal. Yeah, and that's uh, another thing too is, is that the um, making sure that you get enough sleep. Yeah. <clears throat> sleep is the other part of the equation. So, yes, you can eat as much raw fruit and veg as you like, but if you're not getting enough sleep... Um, then you know you're still going to be compromised. So, which did happen a few times when we had to, you know, stay up to use the internet or something like that. But um, most of the time, we tried to get at least um, eight or nine hours, ideally, every night. So, wow, interesting. Yeah, what were some um, uh, health issues you guys overcame through this diet? I know Jeanette, you um, you you went through something in particular. 
Uh, yes, I had a diagnosis of cancer, um, which is almost uh, 11 years ago now, 12 years ago now. Um, and that was probably probably the catalyst that kind of put, put us more on the path of being 100% raw um, because the prognosis wasn't good. And um, so, you know, I... I wanted a refund really on the prognosis. So I thought, well, I better do something about it. So making those, you know, just a few conscious lifestyle choices. I was already vegetarian, vegan, mostly vegan at that stage, but um, I just wanted to do 100% the best I could for myself and for my body to be able to um, change that prognosis. And clearly um, that happened. Um, within the six months I was basically given to live, um, I, uh, you know, I changed that around and, and continue to really live. So, um, and that's just making, you know, just a few choices that made a difference. Um, and uh, so, you know, I'd, I'd had that, that sort of a kind of a, my, my big, big change, I suppose. Um, and I've just published a book about, about the, uh, the, uh, the, um, the journey that I had with cancer to hopefully help others to, you know, think more consciously about helping themselves. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and, um, and then you had various health uh, issues with weight <coughs> and I did. addictions. I used to run when I was at school. So when I was sort of between 14 and 16 or 17, I ran fairly well, miles and half miles and stuff like that. And then I left school and um, gave up running and took up other things like drinking beer and eating pies and smoking cigarettes. That was my main thing that I did. Wow. And I did that for about 30 years and all of a sudden mate, someone took a, took a photo of me one day and I saw this photo and I thought, my God, how did that happen? I had this huge sort of pot belly. I was overweight but I didn't realise it. I thought it was just your average sort of guy. So then I started making some changes, and we're all talking kilograms over here. I can't remember the actual figures in pounds, but I uh, went from 80 kilograms down to 60. Yeah, and on this, run, mm. yeah, on this run, interesting enough, I dropped another five kilograms down to 55, which is, I think, um, only about 100 pounds. It's fairly light. But that's coming up again now, and um, we've noticed since we stopped running, no, the no weight, it stopped, but... Yeah, the weight is coming back on. Um, we, we are still running, but not a marathon every day. Right. So, yeah, I had some huge uh, issues. I had arthritis in my shoulders so bad that I couldn't, I couldn't uh, play tennis or throw a ball. It was just agony. And all that's gone. I mean, here we are 20 years later, and all my joints are much, much better now than, than they were. Mm -hmm. And so the only, the only really thing I did was just change my diet. Wow, that's incredible. Increase the, yeah, the exercise. A bit more exercise, yeah. Mm. yeah. But in, in doing that too, um, you know, just changing your diet and being more conscious about the choices you make, um, you, your body, it, it's like it, um, it rewards you, if you like. It takes you further into that, um, you know, better state of health. And so, you know, it sort of happens without you – having to do it, if you make the change in, in the diet to start with, then you automatically feel better and so you automatically start doing more exercise because that's a natural thing for, for us. You know, we should all be um, moving at some point. So, um, yeah, it just happens. It gets better all the time. That's awesome. So we now see that when we were younger, um, we ran New Zealand, but that was actually when we were older. <laughs> so now... <laughs> Now, 12 years later, 13 years later, we're a lot younger, much more capable of um, physically and mentally of doing a lot more, clearly. So, so I suppose you are heading towards Russia next time. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. We'll see. <laughs> um, okay, so when did you all start getting serious about ultra, ultra endurance running? Um, when did you all, uh, when did you guys start getting back into the serious running? Um, how long have you guys been doing this ultra endurance type of running? Uh, well, I've been running pretty much all my life and I started running marathons 
Uh, my first marathon was in 89. Okay. And um, my competitive marathon. And um, then I started um, running just, you know, for as long as I could or for as long as the time I had and just got more into that um, meditative running and uh, especially out on trails um, and I really enjoy that, just sort of getting back to nature and being a, being a part of it by, you know, running through the forest or up the mountains or wherever. We used to live in Canada, so yeah. we were able to get some good mountain running happening there. And, um, and so, yeah, and then we, then we just sort of started running in, you know, actual ultras. And um, the idea of running the length of New Zealand came up with um, I wanted to do something special for my 50th birthday. Oh, wow. So that one just sort of works out to be 50 marathons. So that was perfect. And, of course, we're originally from New Zealand, so we just um, went down there and ran the length of New Zealand, a marathon a day for 50 days. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of started it. Um, and then, you know, we just kept thinking, well, well, I did anyway, that, you know, wouldn't it be great to – first of all, we moved to Canada from there and, and um, I was thinking about – we could run across Canada and and then by the time we sort of got, you know, a thought real thought process into that, we had actually moved to Australia. So it was clear we had to run around Australia. Um. <laughs> so Jeanette, when we came to Australia, Jeanette kept telling kept telling all her friends and people who, who we were coaching, she kept saying, We're gonna run around Australia and I kept thinking, well, we, should, we shouldn't be saying this because it's such a huge place. I don't think we can do it. So I said one day, quietly, look, let's have a look at the map and see. And we opened up the map and we thought, oh, no, this is huge. I mean, it's, we've actually <laughs> run in the last year the distance from Melbourne to San Francisco. Yeah. You know, that's a long way. <clears throat> and I said, no, you know, we can never do this. It's far too much. And she said, well, I think we can. So we divided up the distance by the days and found out that, it was roughly 42 kilometres or 26 miles every day for 365 days. And they gave us a few days to spare, but then we remembered there's a small state called Tasmania <laughs> down the bottom of Australia. So we figured, well, we'll run that too, <clears throat> and that should take us all the way around. So we made the plans, and amazingly enough, we just made the plans by using Google Maps and, and a big atlas, we were on, on track to within one day of, of the whole trip. We did plan when we had a few major centres. We would stay there for either two or three nights. Yeah. So we ran our marathon every, every morning around the streets or down by the river or somewhere. And then during the evening we would speak at uh, various raw food events. So yeah. it, worked, it worked out well. Uh, we knew we had to have crew and we couldn't really afford to pay people for for a year, so we uh, called for volunteers and amongst the raw food industry and a, a few others, and we were able to pick up volunteers and we had 20 people help us over the course of the year. Mm -hmm. Some stayed for a week or two and some stayed for a month or two and really all we had to do was to, was to drive the two vehicles and to make us lovely green smoothies <laughs> and at the end of each day they'd make a beautiful um, veggie juice which is always what we figured was great. So at the end of each run, each day, we'd have uh, beetroot, um, carrot, apple, ginger, and then made that into two, two big glasses of juice, and we had that as soon as we stopped. Wow. Mm. That's good stuff. <laughs> yep. Um, so what are some tips uh, you guys would have to give to people that are trying to get into, um, say, even running a marathon or getting into ultra endurance or just running in general? What tips would you all have to give them? I think the first one that we would, we would give anyway, having had the experience, um, would be to take it, you know, if you, if you haven't run at all, um, is to take it slowly, ease into mm -hmm. it, and try to um, try to run barefoot as much as possible. Uh, and that, that sounds well. We've been we've been called extreme and fanatical, <laughs> and all those words about 
running barefoot. But if you run barefoot or even walk barefoot as much as you can, that's your natural way of walking or running. Your body doesn't have to think about it. It's you just do it, and um, and so you you never really get injured because you're not trying to do something or you're not wearing shoes that the body has to adjust to or um, or compensate for. And so having just run, you know, close to uh, sixteen thousand kilometers this last year, um, completely in barefoot running shoes, so. The the Vibram Five Fingers is what we wore, and um, we wore them on all terrain. Um, some, <laughs> like Alan mentioned before, there was some pretty rough stuff out there. Um, but we we started wearing them for about eighteen months beforehand to get used to, you know, the feel of basically running barefoot on on um, on hard surface. So we were running on the road for most of the way. It was very, very little trail running, and so it was mostly on that hard tarmac, which we don't normally like to run on. Um, so we had to really train on that to get used to it. And um, and with the with the barefoot shoes, the Vibram shoes, it, it was just great because we didn't have to worry about being injured from running because you don't get injured from running when you're wearing those. You might get injured by not training properly to start with, doing too much too soon, too fast, that type of thing, but not from the shoes uh, and not from the fact that you're basically barefoot. So, um, you know, that would be the first thing I would highly recommend is that people get used to um, being or, or at least having minimalistic shoes. Um, there's a lot more out there now. So the closest to barefoot, you know, you can be and to run lightly on your feet. So, you know, these shoes that we were wearing, um, we were getting a 1,000 to sometimes up to 1,300 kilometers out of these shoes. Wow. Um, whereas before when we used to wear the the regular running shoes, you know, you'd only get five or 600. So um, you can get a lot more because you run lightly. And then there's also the fact that you're running – you know, treading lightly on the earth, which I think is, you know, another part of being consciously aware of what you're doing when you're running. What would you say? No, that's it. <laughs> he agrees. <laughs> and eat a raw vegan diet. Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. I mean, the combination of everything, but um, with the running in particular, yeah, um, there's also a little bit of a, you know, um, people are starting to think, more about the whole stretching side of things where it used to be the same as it used to be. You had to eat lots of pasta before you run to get your, your calories. Um, stretching might be the, a similar situation where people are stretching their, their, um, their bodies maybe too much, too soon, too fast again, hmm. um, not perhaps doing it quite, you know, what is needed. If you, if you run just – as naturally as possible and you eat your food as natural as possible, um, basically you don't need to do any extra for the running. Uh, we, we never stretched the whole run, like sat no down and or stood there and actually did these special stretches. We have a little, a little exercise routine that, re, routine that we do, um, which includes a few stretches, but we didn't stop and stretch every single day and we didn't stretch before and we didn't stretch afterwards like people tend to do and because you your body's quite capable of of you know getting you back into where where you know recovery mode if that's what you need but as we said before we were recovering as we were running um, because of the the food that we eat and um being you know correctly hydrated and and running correctly um, so it, it's a combination of things, but for sure, um, that would be something that we would recommend that people try to go barefoot as much as possible. And when you're not running too, like we just, when we changed over, we threw away all our other shoes and we only either go barefoot or wear the Vibrams. Wherever we go, it doesn't make any difference. And people, you know, you get funny comments, but, um, it doesn't matter. You know, yeah. we're, 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 we're healthy and doing what we're doing and, able to do what we're doing so definitely that's 
more important. Yeah. Cool. Um, and uh, where can people find your book, Jeanette? And where can people connect and and find you guys? Okay. Um, with my book, I have um, my personal website is rawcancure.com. Um, and uh, the book is entitled Raw Can Cure Cancer, but the website's rawcancure.com, and um, you'll find all the information about it there. And um, at the moment, um, you can't buy the book um, out of Australia yet or through my website, but it is becoming available very soon. So, but make it, you know, just make a connection and put an order in and we'll, we'll be getting it out to the States very soon. Um, and, uh, and also Europe and the UK. So, um, the other website that we still have going, um, is running raw around Australia.com. It sounds very long, but if you think about what it was, we did, it's very easy <laughs> to remember running raw around Australia.com. And from there, you can link through to our Facebook page, and um, and we're keeping that updated because we have a lot of things happening this year as well. But you can scroll through on the Facebook page right to the beginning of last year, and we had, we did um, daily updates on there for every single day of the run. And now we're doing it, you know, probably every week or so. We're updating. Um, we've had a lot of media interviews ever since. Um, oh, I <laughs> so imagine posting those up as well so people can see um, that the word is getting out and that the really good message is getting out there to, um, you know, worldwide to a lot of different countries. Um, and so, yeah, so that'll keep going. Um, I'm writing a book about that's going to be based on the run. Um, it'll have, you know, a lot of a lot of the questions that are being asked, those will be answered in the book. And we'll have a lot of images, some recipes from the road, um, and that sort of thing. So that should come out along with the documentary, um, hopefully by mid-year. And um, and we're actually coming over to New York um, oh, cool. to the Woodstock Fruit, Fruit Festival. Oh, are you? Awesome. Yeah, so we'll, we'll be, be there. there. And cool. uh, that's in August. And uh, so we'll be coming over there and, and we'll have the, the book and the, um, and the documentary with us then too. So, But all that information will be coming up on the website. So just keep in touch and um, like the Facebook page and make comments and, you know, all that sort of thing. So people definitely keep in touch and, and um, we'll, we'll uh, be able to, you know, sort of tell everyone what we're doing next and definitely. where we're going to be for our speaking events and things like that. So Yeah, what are your guys' plans for um, 2014? Do you guys have anything planned, just taking time off for a little bit? Well, to, well, this year we've, you know, we've got to get the book and the documentary out. We're doing um, a tour of Australia of the main centres. Um, we're flying this time uh, <laughs> with the book and the um, and the documentary. And then, of course, in August we'll be over in the states, and um, that could be extended into into September, depending on other, you know, engagements that may come up there. But we'll keep you updated with that. And um, when we come back, probably um, during um, October and November, we may be doing some personal one-on-one -on -one retreats here, oh, giving some. Yeah. Cool. So, for, so, you know, keep tuned for that one as well. 